Bring you the exciting story of a US based Nigerian who is a consultant aerospace engineer and he has also brought a wealth of his experience into special technology. He attended Federal Government College, Ilori, Kwara State, North Central Nigeria, and is an alumnus of the University of Lagos, Nigeria, where he obtained a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering. He then moved on to the National Institute of Applied Science of Lyon, a leading engineering school in France, and it's here that he obtained a master's degree in mechanical engineering. He had a brief work stint with the Jakuta Steel Company and Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas, where he designed the logo of the company, which it still bears today. His desire for more challenges led him to obtain a doctorate degree from the Henri Poincaré University in France. He went on to work with BE Aerospace in Jacksonville, Florida in 1998, where he designed and analyzed aircraft interior systems and worked on galleys, refrigeration systems, seats and closets for wide-body aircraft like Boeing and Airbus. In 2000, Dr. Salau rose to become a senior engineer in Delta Airlines Technical Operations Center. At Delta, he worked on such aircraft as the B-767 and the B-777, specializing on fuselage structures, vertical and horizontal stabilizers, thrust reversers, and auxiliary power units. In 2014, his experience in the field led him to take on the role of a consultant in aerospace engineering to various aircraft manufacturers like Atlas Air in New York, Bombardier in Canada, and Sarkovsky Aircraft Connecticut in the United States, where he served as an airframe structural analyst. He worked closely with management and engineering teams to troubleshoot and resolve complex issues while minimizing downtime and risk. He is also among the privileged few who have worked on Black Hawk and Seahawk helicopters as a maintenance review board engineer. Dr. Salau's recent assignment is the design and analysis of Sokovsky's new executive transport helicopter, the VH-92A, and he recently received a Certificate of Appreciation for his contribution to the critical review process of this aircraft. Today, he's a Senior Specialist, Structural Analysis Engineer at L3 Harris Technologies in Melbourne, Florida, where he oversees processes like satellite vehicle processing and assembly, spacecraft testing, integration operations, checkouts, fueling and encapsulation. Coming up on Diaspora Network, our interview with Dr. Ibrahim Salau. In a minute. Welcome back to the program. Now let's get to know this special technology expert a little bit more. This is Melbourne, Florida, and it's here that we find this results-driven stress analyst and mechanical engineer who has contributed to large-scale programs and projects within the U.S. aerospace industry. He begins by telling us the role family has played in his success story. My granddad and my dad raised me jointly, and I spent a whole lot of time with my grandfather, most especially. He was the chief head of the village, where if there's any issue to be resolved between families, they bring it to him, and he seats us down, the grandchildren, to listen to the proceedings. And uh, when he's making his judgment and everything, you know, we listen in and uh, try to be, we'll be very quiet, of course, not to disrupt any proceeding. There was nothing like um, jail system at the time. He was responsible for collecting taxes for the, uh, for the government. And we as grandchildren would help him do, uh, accomplish that task. During the period, he taught us that we sh wherever we go, we are going around with the family's name to protect. Not only are we representing ourselves, we are representing the family where we come from. I think that has played a major role uh, in how I have gone about my life throughout either in Nigeria, in France, 
United States or in Canada. From his experience of working on defense systems in different countries of the world, Dr. Salao is convinced that governments must overlook tribalism to get the best hands. One thing I've seen that, have, that is common between all these countries that is kind of missing from Nigeria is that nobody asks you which state do you belong to. Rather, they ask you what is your state of residence or your place of residence for employment. The, as long as Nigeria keeps looking at people from where they come from, as opposed to what they bring to the table, what they can do with their education, with their background, their career, then it's going to be it's going to take a while for us to get there. It's time for us to start looking at every Nigerian as a Nigerian. Whether you are born in Enugu and living in uh, Kano, you should be able to run for an election as long as you pay your tax, you are a good citizen, you are doing everything that you are supposed to do living there and vice versa if somebody is living in uh, was born in sokoto and living in okene they should be able to be free to to run for an office it doesn't matter where you come from a nigerian should be considered a nigerian in nigeria as an ardent follower of developments back home he's worried by the reports he hears in the news regarding security the issue of security is actually <laughs> right up there. Right now, we are going about, you know, I have a friend who just came from Nigeria, and I asked him how the security situation is in Nigeria, and he told me that uh, it's just complete chaos. And this guy uh, actually lives in Canada. Complete chaos, lawlessness. Um, actually, I was listening to the one of the presidential candidates, uh, you know, actually, whether it's campaigning or not campaigning, I, don't, I can't call it campaigning because he didn't, not once did he say, I'm asking for your vote. Basically, it's, it's like, um, uh, let's, let's, let's pray for those, uh, the life of those laws in a particular state. Without saying that we will do everything on our power to make sure that those who commit this offense will be brought to book. Let's pray. It has always been like that. Oh, let's just pray and everything will be okay. We know that is not happening because everything is not okay. It's only getting worse. Yet we are still praying. But it's time for the government to go beyond prayer to actually do something tangible to make sure that people are living in peace in Nigeria the way I used to live when I was uh, uh, a teenager back in Nigeria where we can sleep go to bed and um, not even lock your door and nothing will happen to you. Uh, you wake up the following day, nothing happens. Still, he's confident that some answers lie in the diaspora through experts that have experience with developing hierarchical reporting structures for identifying potential security threats. For me, when I hear this problem of intelligence, intelligence, the bad guys are using the same they are using cell phone and all kind of technology that the government has control over. So why are the bad guys having an upper hand on controlling this technology more than the Nigerian government can? There has to be, in my opinion, again, not being an expert in the field, that the Nigerian community has to be involved. There has to be a structure that is backed by people and technology to make this thing work. I'll give you a simple example. When September 11 happened in the United States, there was this, um, you know, the Congress, the government met and decided, you know, they come up with a, a program to, to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And the people were tasked. If you see something, say something. And they have a structure behind see something, say something, so that when the community, when anybody, if, if a report is submitted somewhere, there is um, a whole um, apparatus to look at what is being reported. Is that the case in Nigeria today? I'm not so sure. 
So, Nigerian community needs to be involved, and there has to be, for me, a, a sound structure in place, an architecture that will have a hierarchy, meaning that when a report is received, it goes, it flows from one level to the other and is treated with the urgency it demands to foster um, bad things happening in the first place. Dr. Salau ties the current security challenge to the trouble in the education sector. Education plays a key role in who I am today. If our educational system crumbles and our security apparatus but basically, you know, struggling. Where, where is our future? We need to start talking to each other and making sure that if the government needs to take their hands off of so many uh, things and decentralize our educational system so it will work better, I think we'll, that will help a lot. We are talking about Nigerians in diaspora and at home. We have the resources, the talent, both in human and natural resources to solve our problem. But it just seems to me that either because of greed, those who are charged to help us develop are unfortunately not doing the right thing. And I call on the part that be in Nigeria to put your ego aside and look at Nigeria as uh, your number one priority. And he demonstrates making Nigeria a priority in his role as two-term president of Zomunta Association, a non-for-profit US-based Nigerian organization dedicated to improving the development of Nigeria through social services in education and scholarship, healthcare services and culture. Now that's an inspiring story. And you, our viewers, may ask, when will Nigeria deploy special technologies to solve some of her critical problems, especially in the area of security? Well, the answer is now. After all, the country does have the experts. And that's it on the show. You can catch other episodes on our website, channelstv.com. I'm Ijeoma Bonyato. Let's do this again some other time.